welcome back. And that is my PDP-1183, and this is a VT320 terminal, and they're both on and running currently, which means we are actually starting this episode with functioning equipment to a certain extent. The PDP-1183 is actually inside of a VAX station tower, but the internals uh, construction of it is just a BA-23 chassis, which is what the 1183 originally came in, in the cabinet that now has an 1144 sitting inside of it over there in the corner. So all I did was just transpose the CPU card and the two memory cards into the VAX station box and throw some power at it and we needed a terminal to see what it would actually do, so we cleaned up the VT320 as well, but it was giving us a little bit of issue with a keyboard error, and it actually still does that, unless you let it warm up for about 10 minutes. So there's not a keyboard problem, there's actually something inside that we're gonna need to fix, but right now it is working, so I wanna use it while it's still functioning. And so what do I want to do with this system? Well, I think it's time that we actually try to get it to boot into something substantial. Yes, it did boot in the last episode, but it's, well, it's not quite like a real boot because it's just CPU and memory. And the stuff that we're seeing on the screen here is just coming from an internal diagnostic ROM. A real boot will be going into some kind of operating system, which means that we need a hard drive of some type with software on it, which this RD54 right here may potentially have. This is the hard drive that originally came with the 1183 system from Pittsburgh, and it should have some type of OS on it if it works. But the only way to know for sure if it will work is to just plug it in and send it. And that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pop the front panel off, plug this guy in, put the correct drive control card in the back, plug it all in, and hopefully, hopefully it works. All right, I'm never this lucky, but I'm just gonna go ahead and try it. We plugged the hard drive in, the terminal is on and ready to go. We got our M7555 in the back. Everything's just plugged in exactly like it should be. <sighs> Let's see what happens. The hard drive is spun up though. Doesn't sound like it has a head crash. That's good news. Ooh, we got a, ooh, it's a starting system. It's very much so reading off the hard drive. <laughs> User defined access for device VH3 not found, device disabled. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> yes! RSTS V9.5-08 R59 AK Duo in it V9.5. This has RSTS on it, version 9.5 apparently. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, so I absolutely was not prepared for it to actually boot in the previous shot. So I realized that the lighting and everything probably wasn't working very well. And so here we are at today's date again. Let's give this a try one more time. Uh, and enter today's date as day, month, year. So we'll try 23-AUG-84. Uh, we'll see if it'll let me go back in time here. Nope, that is unacceptable. So we'll do 23-AUG-88. Uh, uh, I don't know, 88. That worked, all right. so. 12, we'll just say it's noon. It's not actually noon, but uh, there we go. And start time sharing, I guess. We'll just hit enter on this and see what happens. Oh, it's reading the hard drive. Oh, size of monitor has changed from 78K to 77K, adjusting memory table, memory available, zero error. Uh-oh, uh-oh, oh, <laughs> oh, all right. Whew, I don't know what any of that means. Unrecoverable disk error on DU0. Fatal RSTS slash E system initialization error. We have a problem. So I was thinking about the, uh, the, the fatal error that we got on the RSTS installation, and I realized that the write protect was actually on the physical write protect switch. So I went ahead and restarted the system, turned the physical write protect switch off, and so now we're restarted back up to today's date. This is like the third time we've tried this, uh, but we'll 
uh, see if we can, why am I not working here? Full on terminal failure. Oh, geez. <laughs> of all the problems I thought I would have today, that is not the one. Status report, it works. <laughs> Who would have thought nothing ever works on this channel, but well, good job, that digital. You, you built an awesome tower here. All I had to do was just plug stuff in and turn the power switch on. The hard drive works beautifully. The M7555 works beautifully. And I realized that the fatal RSTS error that we were getting is most likely due to the fact that I had the physical write protect switch on. So I turned it off, restarted the system, and uh, went, went to put today's date in and uh, terminal failed. Total 100% terminal failure. I restarted it and it refused to come on, just flashing some lights on the keyboard over and over and over again. So something in there definitely let loose. And uh, well, I think we need to fix it. But if we can't get this VT320 fixed, we're not out of the game yet because we have a bunch of backup terminals. We have a uh, deck rainbow that we could use in VT100 emulation mode. We have two Centurion terminals, and as long as it's set to 9600 baud, 8 bits, no parity, and one stop bit, any of those will work. And we also happen to have the Princeton Multisync terminal, which is actually a uh, color graphics display and terminal. It has a little text switch on the side. I don't know the pinout of it, but that is ultimately the monitor that I want to use with this machine. Although I do really want to try and get this VT320 up. So I think maybe we'll take a look at this one first. If we can't do that, we'll go to the Princeton. If we can't do the Princeton, we'll go to the Centurions. And then we're definitely going to get deeper into the operating system because the hard drive is working perfectly. So, oh, this is so exciting and so frustrating to get so close. Uh, but let's try to fix this VT320 first. We'll start by laying the monitor face down on a towel. This will give us access to the two screws on the bottom. Then the top just pops out of some clasps at the front and comes right off. And right off the bat, we can see at least one dead capacitor. Let's remove the power supply board to get to the rest of the capacitors. We'll just unplug all the wires, undo a clasp, and it slides out with a bit of finagling. Then the power switch needs to be popped out next. And with the power supply board removed, let's get the shield off of it. One screw and it slides right off, giving us a good look. These green Nichicon capacitors seem to be our culprits. The goo coming out of this one stinks to high heaven. And ultimately I want to replace all of these green Nichicon capacitors, but I only have three of the exact value in my collection. So we'll just start with those for now. And I'll remove the old cap by heating it up and wiggling it back and forth until it falls out. Then I'll clean up the holes with some solder wick and boy the Bad capacitor certainly left its mark. We'll clean that up with a Q-tip and some IPA. And uh, one pad didn't survive the goo. It just ate that pad completely out. But the trace is on the other side of the board, so I can just solder that one from the top and it'll be fine. For the capacitors that I don't have direct replacements for, I'll just parallel some capacitors to get an equivalent cap for those. And uh, there we go, all green Nichicon capacitors replaced. I put some heat shrink around my paralleled caps for good measure. And the five Nichicon capacitors that came out were very gross indeed. All right, new capacitors in place. Let's do a smoke test. We'll just go ahead and flip the switch and... That's not good. <laughs> Getting the same error on the keyboard here. Okay, I think I've found a bit of a problem. This diode measures as shorted in circuit. So we'll unscrew it from the heat sink plate, remove it and test it again, and it's fine. 
But one leg of the diode is connected to the back plate of that diode and the opposing leg on the PCB would be connected to the heat sink plate. So maybe the goo from the bad capacitor sprayed on the diode causing a short? Let's toss a new insulation pad and grommet in place and try again and we'll give it a little smoke test here and <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. It works now. All right, that is Without a doubt, one of the strangest failure modes I've ever seen. I've never heard of the insulating material between uh, a diode or one of those transistors breaking down and shorting out. But, uh, well, that appears to be what happened because that's the only thing I changed. And, well, now we're fully up and working correctly. The terminal is ready to go. I went ahead and tossed in the TK50. It is not plugged in. I just used it to fill the hole and I threw the front on the uh, vac station tower here. Uh, so let's spin it up and try to get all the way into RSTS here. So we'll flip the power switch on. This happens on the occasion and I don't know what it means. I can hear that the hard drive spun up, but we're not booting. And you can see that the uh, boot number is stuck at 77. Don't know what that means. So if anybody knows, let me know. But I can usually get past it by just flipping it off and then flipping it on again. Yeah, there it goes. Boom. Testing in progress. Please wait. So every once in a while when I flip it on, it sticks at 77. And I don't know what that code means. I'll try to look it up later. But for now, it looks like we're going through our self-test correctly. There we go. RSTS version 9.5-08 RS95AK. Today's date. Let's go ahead and put in a, a actual usable date here. We'll do 23-AUG-88. And we'll hit enter. Current time is 12 o'clock. Start time sharing. We'll just hit enter here and see what happens. I can hear the hard drive seeking. Disk is being rebuilt. Wait, that's an interesting sign. I don't know what that means. Okay, good news, bad news. The good news is, is that the terminal is rock solid. Uh, the bad news is that we've been stuck on this disk is being rebuilt wait screen for about 10 minutes now. There has been no disk activity during that entire time. I'm starting to think that it's locked up. So instead of power cycling it, I'm just gonna hit the reset button on the front panel here. Uh, and let's try this again. So uh, there we go, testing in progress, please wait. It's gonna count up from one to nine. All right, today's date is, uh, we'll do the same date again, 23rd, August 88. Current time is 12 o'clock. Start time sharing, yes. Disc is being rebuilt, wait. Uh, we're back to here again. It looks like we finally got past it this time. It was constant disk access this time, so I was a little more hopeful, but I was, I was kind of holding my breath. Uh, it looks like it's set the date, um, 12.07. You can see that took seven minutes to rebuild the disk there. It says 68 devices disabled, which is a lot. Uh, wow, okay. CCI system startup, control equal normal, start system, yes, no. Let's just do yes. Uh, maybe just Y? Maybe just an enter? <laughs> okay. Log start phase, August 23rd, 1988. Okay, log file will be 14start.123, set system defaults, uh, disk mount phase, mounting DU1 data1, disk pack is not mounted. Apparently, it's looking for disks that I don't have. We'll just uh, do uh, skip, maybe? Just do S here. 
Okay, it's going quick now. We had starting receiver, set keyboard defaults, then terminal disabled, set terminal data, terminal disabled, set printer defaults, enable logins. I can hear the hard drive going nuts in the background. Starting CCI net, crash always, crash analysis phase, start PBS manager. There is so much happening and I don't understand a single bit of it. This is awesome. Okay, it's been sitting here at startup complete for a few minutes. The LEDs on the back panel are going bonkers, but there's been no hard drive access. So I'm just gonna hit a button on the keyboard here and see what happens. Oh, uh, <laughs> it said bye. All right, cooperative computing, WIL number one, KB0V9, uh, bye. Uh, okay, let's try, I can't type anything, that's, really weird. No matter what key I press, nothing happens except enter. If I press enter, it says, please check your caps lock key. Okay, we'll hit caps lock and try again, but uh, again, nothing. Uh, very interesting. Maybe it's asking for a password? I don't know uh, the password. <laughs> Invalid program group. Um, <laughs> all right, maybe we're stuck here. Well, we may be at a bit of an impasse here. The fact that there's no echo on the terminal whenever you press any keys feels very reminiscent of typing a password into a Linux box. Uh, they do that, I think, so that whoever has access to your screen doesn't know how long your password is. And I think that's what's going on here. I think it's asking us for a password and I don't know that password, nor is there any way that I can figure it out because this machine came from an automotive shop up in Pittsburgh that has been uh, out of business for a very long time. Uh, so I think we're just gonna have to end up reinstalling a new operating system on there. I have some installation disks for an RSX version that says 5.11, which is interesting because I think 5.11 RSX doesn't exist. So that may be some custom homebrew flavor that Bowman made. So I really wanna dive into those anyways, but I'll probably install that on a different hard drive. I wanna keep this hard disk intact because it's kind of the historical beginnings of this machine. And I have a bunch of five and a quarter hard drives that we can put a new operating system on. But I don't know, maybe one of you guys out there is an RSTS expert and I am way off mark on this screen. I still don't know why my LEDs here are going bonkers. You guys can hopefully let me know. So if you are familiar with RSTS or familiar with the PDP-11 in general, leave a comment down below because I want to know what's going on. So much stuff happened in the last 15 minutes and I didn't understand any of it, but it sure was a lot of fun. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. There's going to be a lot more of this machine coming up in the future and I hope to see you then.